Put your hands together. Let's get him back here. Mark Barnett is Roy Orbison. Welcome to our YouTube channel titled Vinyl City Broadcasting, your transit express to rock and roll trivia. I'm Marie, the host of VCB. I'm standing here in front of the beautiful Lewis Family Playhouse in Rancho Cucamonga. Today we are going to interview Mark Barnett, a tribute artist to the late great Roy Orbison. He does a show called Revisiting the Orbison Years. Mark will be performing here this afternoon with his band, The Black and White Knights. Let's go inside and I'll tell you a little bit more about Mark. It's a beautiful theater, isn't it? Before we start the interview, we're going to play a promo of the group performing some of Roy Orbison's classics. Only
certainly bring Roy Orbison to life, don't they? Just a brief synopsis on Mark. In his nostalgic rock and roll journey, vocal talent Mark Barnett embodies the essence of Roy Orbison and perfectly captures his unique sound and incredible range. Taking on classic hits such as Only the Lonely, Crying, In Dreams, Blue Angel, and many people's favorite, Pretty Woman. Backed by his powerhouse band, the Black and White Knights, Orbison's iconic ballads will come to life once again here on stage at the Lewis Family Playhouse. Let's go backstage now to the green room where Mark and his wife Sandy are waiting for us. I'm sitting here with Mark Barnett, a tribute artist to the late, great Roy Orbison. The name of his show is Revisiting the Orbison Years, and the name of his band is The Black and White Knights. How are you, Mark? It's a pleasure meeting you. I'm doing great. It's and a pleasure I love, being here. Oh, thank you. And I love your sunglasses. Thank you. Thank you for taking a few minutes to do an interview with us at Vinyl City Broadcasting. My pleasure. Is it okay to ask you a few questions now? Sure. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got interested in singing Roy Orbison songs. Well, I was playing this little local dive, and I've been singing Roy Orbison songs for quite a, quite a few years before then. And a drummer friend of mine who used to play with the Drifters came down from Vegas because he wanted to spend more time with his son. And he was playing in this band, and we were playing this little power trio. I was playing bass at the time, and uh, we just got finished doing uh, Crying and Only the Lonely. And uh, we got down off the stage, and he says, you know, you sound like him, and I'll bet if you went and got a wig and wore some cheap sunglasses, you would look just like him. I said, no. <laughs> about two weeks later, I went into a wig shop and I bought this Elvis uh, wig and I cut the mutton chops off and, uh, and I bought some cheap sunglasses and I sat down in front of the mirror and, and uh, I had to part my hair a little bit because Elvis wore his hair a little bit different. And I looked in front of the mirror and I said, I'll be darned, I do look like him. <laughs> so Mike was playing in another place uh, later on. His name was Mike Davidson. Um, and I came down, I didn't tell him I was coming. And I came down and sat in the audience, and I walked in and I sat down, and he says, I can't believe I'm sitting here looking at a dead guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, from then on, uh, I started doing some, some gigs, you know, dressed as Roy. And then I met another man uh, who was uh, trying to record me uh, doing Roy Orbison, and he introduced me to some people in, uh, in Vegas. One of them was Harry Shehoyan. Uh, he's the Elvis tribute artist and, and, and one of the best Elvis tribute artists I've ever seen in my life. And I met him and uh, another guy that does Buddy Holly. And, and, uh, but anyway, uh, we played some gigs in Vegas and uh, then I, I went on to, uh, to do a gig with, uh, with, we did a Buddy Roy and Elvis tribute uh, in Boston. And they flew me out to Vegas. We did a, a one day rehearsal, flew out on the red eye to Boston and uh, picked us up in a limousine. They took us to a five-star hotel, and, and we did that gig, and, and, uh, and it turned out really well. It was a fundraiser for the Cedar sinai Hospital. And uh, came back on the red eye the next day and spent uh, Mother's Day with my mother. And, and from then on, I thought, this is what I really want to do. And, and this is not the only thing I've done in music, but it's, it's the, the best and the most rewarding for me. That means a lot in life, and you certainly look like him, and you're not dead. <laughs> so how did you come up with the name Mark Barnett and the Black and White Knights? Well, there is a black and white video that Roy Orbison recorded in 1987 at the Coconut Grove called Roy Orbison and Friends and the Black and White Knight, uh, a black and white knight. Uh, and there was, it was an all-star band, Bruce Springsteen, uh, 
uh, James Burton, uh, Katie Lang, uh, Bonnie Raitt, uh, Jennifer Warren, uh, uh, Elvis Costello. It was an all-star uh, band that he had, and it was the last big concert that he did. And it's all in black and white night. And it's all in black and white. So that's how I got the name, the Black and White Knights. Okay, well, I'm going to look for that Roy Orbison video now that you told us about it. So, Mark, who were your musical influences growing up? Well, uh, I'm going to say Chuck Berry at first. Um, and I used to sit in my little treehouse when I was a kid, and, and uh, Elvis and, and uh, the Beatles. And but when Roy Orbison came on, and I was sitting up in my treehouse, I was only about seven or eight, and uh, I said, "Wow, I want to learn to sing like that." Yeah. And for the longest time, I didn't. Um, and I started out at an early age playing in my dad's band. I was 13, and my brother was 12. I played bass, and he played guitar. Or no, sorry, he. My dad played guitar, and he played drums. So we got out of school to go on the road with my dad, and we loved it. We'd go out for six weeks and we'd come back, and back to school, and my principal said, where have you been? And he said, well, we've been out on the road. He said, you can't do that. <laughs> and I, said, I gave him my dad's phone number, and he says, you, you uh, tell my dad that. And my dad was the kind of person that you did not wake him up before noon. <laughs> He's a musician, so yeah. don't wake him up before noon. So I've been doing this for a long time, but not doing the Roy thing, but playing music for a long time. Well, keep it going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, what song do audiences especially want you to sing? Uh, only the Lonely for one, because it's one that they know. And the most known one is Pretty Woman. Yes. And then Crying and Running Scared. And, and those are some of the top... 10 that, uh, that Roy Orbison did. Yes, when I ask somebody, um, do you know Roy Orbison, and somebody younger usually, and they'll say, and then I start singing a little Pretty Woman, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I know exactly the case, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, we'd like to know a story about yourself that is either funny or serious, that's not on your website or any other publication, and you always wanted to share it. Well, uh, this has to do with the road, and it, it, we were on tour um, about three or four years back in, uh, in Arizona. And we were driving on the 10, and uh, all of a sudden, the traffic came to a screeching halt. And it was 15 or 20 minutes later, and we hadn't moved. Oh. So my drummer and my keyboard player, everybody gets out, and my drummer goes and looks around in the median, and he finds a golf ball. And then he finds an oil funnel spout. And then he found a stick. So we were making the best of a bad situation out there playing golf <laughs> in the middle of a median. Oh my you know, God. what had happened is there was a hay truck that caught fire and we had to wait until the fire department came and put it out. Yeah, so that, that is a funny story, definitely <laughs> funny story. <laughs> I'm glad they put out the fire. Yeah. Um, what new and exciting projects are you involved with now or coming up in the near future? Um, well, I, I have uh, the candlelight coming up next year on June 10th, and uh, I'll be doing another tour in Arizona, um, a couple tours in Arizona uh, coming up next year. Well, excellent. Um, you're doing a wonderful thing, uh, teaching and, and showing people what wonderful Roy Orbison music is out there and it's, it's great to listen to. And that brings to light, you said uh, something about teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't know the history of Roy. Mm -hmm. And that's why we do this because we not, I not only sing the Roy Orbison songs, yes. but we tell the story of Roy's early son years all the way to his death in two 45 to 50 minute sets. And they know a lot about the Beatles, they know a lot about uh, right. uh, Elvis, uh, but they don't know a lot of Roy's history, and he had a lot of tragedy in his life. Yes, he did. Yeah. And instead of, you know, taking to the bottle or, mm -hmm. or drugs, he buried himself into his music. Yes. And uh, I have to commend him for that. We do too, definitely. Mark, how would you like to close out the interview with BCB today? Well, 
my wife and I uh, re rewrote one of Roy Orbison's songs. Okay. Okay, and we sent it to them. We didn't think that they were going to like it. Mm -hmm. And instead of only the lonely, it's only baloney. <laughs> okay. And the reason why I wrote this song is because when I was a kid, there was 11 kids in our family, and there wasn't always a lot to eat. So, uh, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to sing it like a cappella. Sure. It's just a little bit of it. We love a cappella. We oh, sent it to Roy Orbison, and they gave us permission to record it because they loved it too. Okay. So it starts out like, be a well o g n a and a little mayonnaise. Be a well o g n a only baloney. Only baloney. Only baloney is all I have for lunch today. Only baloney. Same thing I had yesterday. If I had pastrami, chop, 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 chop. Or maybe roast beef, chop, 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 chop. Lettuce and tomato, chop, 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 chop. And a big slice of cheese, chop, 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 chop. But only baloney is all I have to eat. Only baloney, B O L O G N A. That's just a little bit of it. <laughs> You get uh, the drift. We liked it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, thank you once again um, for giving us this interview. It was a pleasure, and we're looking forward to the show tonight with you and your band. All right. Okay. Thank you for having me. Yes. Sure. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate <laughs> thank that. You. <laughs> Very cute song. You had us smiling and laughing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. Did you notice in the interview? Mark talked about the concert that Roy Orbison did at the Coconut Grove in California in 1987. It was called Roy Orbison and the Black and White Knight. This is the concert that Mark took the name of his group from, Mark Barnett and the Black and White Knights. The entire show was fabulous filmed in black and white. What a nice touch. You can bring it up on YouTube if you'd like. His funny story about being delayed alongside the highway on his way to a concert because a truck full of hay caught fire that held up traffic for about 30 minutes. The drummer and the keyboard player deciding to kill a little time and play some golf alongside the medium of the highway with a golf ball, an oil funnel, and a stick they found in the gutter. You know, Mark, they have establishments today called golf courses around the country that you can play golf with real golf clubs that you can rent or purchase in a clubhouse. Just kidding. Ending the show with only baloney was a real treat. You know, we couldn't stop laughing so clever. After the interview, we stayed out front in the auditorium lobby until the show began. After the show, we went back out into the lobby and watched people leaving. No one was crying because, of course, they had just heard the stellar performance from Mark Barnett and the Black and White Knights. Mark, you're such a talented man and your voice is so similar to Roy Orbison's. You really do him justice by carrying on his legacy. And to boot, you even look like him. You've got it all. It was a joy to interview you and spend a little quality time with you and your lovely wife, Sandy, after the interview. We took some pictures of Roy, Rico, and myself in the green room, and we posted them on our Facebook page. As you will see, Mark and I have on similar shades. He's just a lot taller than I am. Please check out Mark's website by going to 
www.markasroy.com. If you haven't heard this group of talented artists perform, check out their touring schedule on their calendar page and buy tickets today if they'll be performing in a city near you. You won't be disappointed. Any of you, including promoters, who would like to hire Mark and the Black and White Knights for your next show or event, their contact information will be posted on our last slide. Click on Contact Us button on their home page to send them an email. We also want to remind everyone to subscribe to our channel, Vinyl City Broadcasting, so you don't miss any of our shows and tell your friends about us. We're back in VCB West studio, where we decorated with some of Mark Barnett and the Black and White Knights pictures. Pretty cool, don't you think? Hmm, I'm getting craving for a bologna sandwich, Rico. Let's go to our favorite deli. B-O-L.